Good morning. It's Wednesday and uh, it is time for our devotional. I uh, would encourage you to keep Susie Milligan and Glenn Alpau in your prayers as they are both in the hospital down in Sayre. So please keep them before the Lord. I also just saw a, a video from Camp Kesawasco and they've had tremendous damage as a result of the storms that have come through. And uh, there are any number of ways that you can be helpful in those, uh, in, in that disaster. Uh, financially, of course, and uh, if you need more information, you can uh, go ahead and, and uh, message me or um, I will try and have something uh, put on a little later, maybe today, um, regarding that on this post. Uh, the other thing is that they are looking for people to come and work and help with the cleanup because there's an awful lot of, uh, of person hours necessary to uh, get things back in shape again. Right now, they have roads washed out. Um, the, uh, the area around the swimming area is just full of debris that's come down the hill and into the lake. And... Uh, uh, some damage to buildings it, it's a mess and there's very real need there so um, if you are interested please get in touch with me I, as I said I will try and get a, a uh, uh, an address posted that you can contact uh, but if you go on Upper New York Conference Upper New York Annual Conference uh, you can find Camp Casawasco in there and get that information for yourself if you'd like so please uh, keep that uh, in, in heart and mind. Also, we, the men at the Owego United Methodist Church are going to be having a uh, starting back up our pancake breakfast. Um, when I say pancake breakfast, it really is uh, not a pancake breakfast. There are pancakes to be sure. There's also sausage and gravy and biscuits. There's uh, scrambled eggs so, and, uh, and there's sausage. And uh, let's see, it's been so long. Um, well, there's juice and coffee, obviously, and uh, some good fellowship. We invite you to come. Cost is $7 for adults, and uh, kids under three are free. So, uh, and and I would guess that that's uh, somewhat um, adaptable to the necessity of the moment. So, uh, at any rate... So please be praying for the Owego United Methodist Men this morning and uh, as we, because we'll be kind of talking about that at our men's group, but also on Saturday as we do the breakfast. All right, let's get started because this is a long scripture and I don't know how much, you may need to be patient and that's the theme of the week as I read the scripture from the uh, book of Micah. When was the last time you read anything from Micah? Well, they're going to make up for it today. All right, let's pray. Oh God, prepare us through the active presence of your Spirit to come before you worthily and to ask of you rightly. Enlighten our understanding, purify our every desire, quicken our wills into instant obedience to your word. Strengthen every right purpose. Direct this hour of worship to the magnifying of your name and to the enduring good of we who are your children and servants. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, Book of Micah, Chapter 7, all of it. And uh, it goes on a while, so stick with me. Woe is me, for I have become like one who, after the summer fruit has been gathered, after the vintage has been gleaned, finds no cluster to eat. There is no first ripe fig for which I hunger. The faithful have disappeared from the land, and there is no one left who is upright. They all lie in wait for blood, and they hunt each other with nets. Their hands are skilled to do evil. The official and the judge ask for a bribe, and the powerful dictate what they desire. Thus they pervert justice. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright of them is a thorn hedge. The day of their sentinels of their punishment has come. Now their confusion is at hand. Put no trust in a friend. Have no confidence in a loved one. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your embrace. 
For the son treats the father with contempt. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies are members of your own household. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Mm -hmm. I must bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he takes my side and executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. I shall see his vindication. Then my enemy will see, and shame will cover her who said to me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Now she will be trodden down like mire in the streets. A day for the building of your walls. This is a, a, a segment which in this particular Bible is uh, titled A Prophecy for Restoration. A day for the building of your walls. In that day the boundary shall be far extended. In that day they will come to you from Assyria to Egypt and from Egypt to the river. From sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. But the earth will be desolate because of its inhabitants for the fruit of their newings. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in days of old, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, the nation, and show us marvelous things. The nation shall see and be ashamed of all their might. They shall lay their hands on their mouths, their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick dust like a snake, like the crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their fortress. They shall return. They shall turn in dread to the Lord our God, and they shall stand in fear of you. Who is like you, God, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us. He will treat our iniquities underfoot. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unswerving loyalty to Abraham, as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Well, on a week in which we're kind of focusing on the concept of patience, this uh, uh, this particular passage certainly strikes home, doesn't it? Sometimes, uh, and I, I think often throughout our, my own history, let alone the history of the world, you know, these uh, there have been these time frames where evil seems to be dominant and to be... Um, winning in every respect you look at you look at germany in world war ii and i don't think there's much of any question in anybody's mind <clears throat> that hitler was indeed an evil man um and initially he could do no wrong you know uh the first uh the first few um years in which he was in power he just grew and dominated and overwhelmed killed the opposition, and then engaged in the war. <clears throat> and um, initially, there didn't seem to be any way of stopping him. You know, that blitzkrieg uh, the form of warfare where he just rolled through <clears throat> with massive numbers of tanks and all those kind of things. And and there appeared to be no way to stop him. And, and uh, most of the rest of the world was somewhat in despair. And yet they continued to do battle against that evil. And by the end of the war, his destruction was complete. And, uh, and so, you know, you, you see in the, uh, in the eyes of history, and again, that's not the only time you could, you know, you could claim that. Um, if you look at our civil war as a war for a, uh, uh, for the, the understanding of slavery and freeing the slaves initially the south was dominating just you know there was we couldn't the north couldn't do anything right and uh, and then again by the end of the war um the uh there was a 
very major change up, obviously, and the North wound up winning. Um, again, if you look at that from just from the concept of slavery, there is no question that slavery, especially as it was practiced at that point, um, very different in most respects from what we see slavery consisting of, especially within the Jewish population, the Hebrew population uh, in the Old Testament. But um, it, it certainly was an evil institution. There's no way that you could see it as anything else. And, uh, and, and again, evil, uh, when we have allowed evil to grow, uh, the more that we allow it to grow, the harder it is to, um, the harder our job in what God calls us to do is to get rid of it and to um, remove it from its platform, if you will. You know, again, looking at the scripture. Um, and... Uh, and putting God back where God belongs, and only God belongs. So, you know, as you look at this, one of the things, you know, when you think of patience, you see the, uh, you, you see the things as they are, and you recognize what is wrong with them. And uh, we, there's, there's two levels. One, we obviously need to allow God to be God. And, uh, and, time and space according to his will and according to his plan uh, he will defeat all evil there is a day coming even uh, even perhaps in our future uh, aside from the return of the Lord there is a day coming when um, evil will be uh, dominated by good but the thing about it is is we do have a part in that and the more that we allow and you notice that the that Micah refers to his own life or to the life of the Hebrew people at that point um, as being in sin in the midst of sin and and this is and there's an element of of justice we've allowed this to happen and therefore the um, the wait is going to be longer and yet God is always going to win in the end there is no question as to the outcome let there never be any question in your mind or in your heart as to the outcome god is going to win even over death you know i think that uh, when we when we consider eternal life when we consider resurrection when we consider all those things you know the the thing that leaps out of that most profoundly is the fact that even death is not going to win. And if death can't win, then how can evil ultimately become the winner? So we know what the end is. Uh, we patiently wait for that. And, and I guess I feel like right now uh, where the world is at is probably in, in most respects um, among the worst that it's ever been in my lifetime uh, that, you know, that I'm aware of. And I remember some bad times, you know, but uh, I, I would say we are in a, a lower level now than we have ever been. And so as we look at all of that and we consider it and consider the evil all around the world that is, seems to be just growing and dominating, we need to be patient for God. We also need to stand firm in our convictions. Um, we need to be responsive first, foremost, and always, and sometimes only to God. And that is a tough, that's a tough row for us to hold. But God is faithful, and God will come through. And when the course of events that God has allowed to happen because of human sin and wickedness, when that course of events has run its, its course, God is going to step in. And that's what Micah promises here, and that is what you know we have been promised in the good news of the gospel. It is what we've been promised throughout the explanation, if you will, of the good news that is the rest of the New Testament. 
And even in our own lives, we have seen that reality. I think most of us have seen it time and time again. So, patience. You know, patience. It is a, a critical element. We, we stand firm in the truth. We stand firm in what it is that God is uh, laying before us. But in the meantime, we must be patient. And our patience is also reflected in action. And the action that Micah holds up to us is submission to the Lord. Um, so it's not just a matter of sitting back and twiddling our thumbs. Uh, far from it. You know, real patience is a continuous submission and resubmission and re-resubmission of our hearts and our minds and our souls to the Lord. And, uh, and that's where we find the strength that we need to be as patient as we need to be to get through these things and, and, and even just to get through the things of now. Not, I'm not even just talking about the things of the future as in, you know, death and resurrection, or the second coming, uh, you know, or the rapture, or any of that stuff. I'm talking about getting through from today to tomorrow. We need to be patient, and our patience is demonstrated in the consistent resubmission of our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies to the purposes of God. So, I hope that uh, in some way that has spoken to your hearts this morning. Um, you know, as I read it and was getting ready, I thought, wow, well, this is really, uh, seems very apropos. I don't care which side of the, uh, you know, which side of the coin you feel like you're on. If you, if you can honestly look at things right now and say, it's wonderful, um, I, you, you got different colored glasses than mine. And, uh, um, you know, we, uh, we need to not be so certain of politicians, not be dependent on those in power. We need to be dependent upon God and consciously, actively living dependent on God is what true patience is really all about. Well, Live today in Christ's presence, remembering that he is near and he will sustain you as you serve in his name. And it is in that name that we pray for these things. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Have a great day. We will see you tomorrow.